Hello all, welcome back. Now we are going to look at 12th lesson called Data Services and in this module we cover four different topics. One is uh, CDN and next is Azure File Sync and we will see what is Import and Export Service and Data Box. This particular video covers only the first topic called Content Delivery Network and in that we will see what is CDN and how does it benefit and different types of CDN profile and endpoints and different options available like time to live and compression. So basically content distribution network is a network of servers which is spread across the globe and that can help effectively deliver the content to the end user with very less latency. So for this setup we need to have what we called head servers and the head servers is distributed across the globe and uh, different providers has a different type of head servers and different point of presence. The advantage of using this type of uh, setup is that the content will be delivered to the end user which is very low latency and hence accessibility will be very fast. There are two terminologies which we need to be aware of in CDN. One is what we called the origin server and other is the edge server. The origin server is the one which actually hosts the content. Example might be a web server or an Azure website where we host all the images, uh, static pages, etc. That's called origin and the server which is actually catching the content from the origin server is what we call it as a uh, pop or point of presence server or also known as edge server. The benefit of using this setup is that since the content will be mostly served from the edge server, the load to the actual backend origin will be very less. If you take a look at how the end-to-end -end CDN works, user normally requests a file, say for example, uh, www.mywebsite.com slash file name etc right so once the user requests uh, a particular http or https url it will go to the nearest edge server or the pop server and it will check whether the file is already present there or not if it is not there then the edge server will request the backend origin server where the actual files are hosted and then the origin servers return the file to the edge server. Now the edge server has the file. What it basically does is that it will ca cache the file locally in the edge server and then returns the file to the original requester. Next, whenever there are other users who are trying to access the same file from a nearby location to the first user, then they will be by default routed to the same edge server and this time the edge server already has the uh, content which is cached from the first user's request right so it can directly go ahead and serve the pages to the user uh, directly that means that say for example if there is round trip time of 500 millisecond for the first user the time taken for the second user will be say for example very less maybe a 50 second and one thing to note is that the user should be always redirected to the same uh, point of presence or the edge server uh, so that the content is cached. An example might be if the user is in North America where we have different edge servers available in North America and the origin server is somewhere around the world say for example in Europe. Now in this case if a second user is trying from North America he will have uh, performance benefit since the content is served from the same edge server. Whereas if an user is trying from somewhere in Asia then in this case he will be routed to his nearby pop server that means that somewhere in Asia he will be uh, routed and that server doesn't have the cache already existing. So that means that for that user he needs to again go back to origin server and get the latest content whereas if there is second user also from Asia then in that case 
the performance benefit will be there for the subsequent users so in Azure there is something called CDN profiles uh, to create CDN it's a way of uh, collection of uh, endpoints uh, and there are some things which we note when we are creating a CDN profile all the uh, CDN endpoints which is uh, created inside a single profile should have the same pricing tier and the same origin and we can create uh, multiple profiles to organize those endpoints so if there are uh, different uh, pricing tiers for different endpoints then in that case it makes sense to create multiple CDN endpoints there are certain limits at subscription level as well some are soft limits and some are hard limits and if we hit the hard limit uh, then obviously we have to create new subscription but if we hit the soft limit we can increase that limit by raising a support ticket there are different pricing tiers available for the CDN profiles uh, for example if we look at Akamai there is standard Akamai and there is one more called standard Microsoft profile which is by default uh, Microsoft's native CDN and there are two different tiers for variation when one is standard and another is premium so based on the features user can pick what pricing tier uh, we want to choose so whenever we want to configure a CDN endpoint we need to choose what is the type of the origin or the backend server and by default uh, Azure CDN supports different uh, backend origins we can choose a storage account or we can use a cloud service we can directly use a web app or if we have some custom URL then we can just select the custom origin and by default whenever we create a CDN endpoint we will get a unique name uh, and the format will be like CDM, uh, CDN uh, endpoint name dot azure edge dot net so that will be your CDN URL if we want to add our own custom domain uh, say for example www.contoso.com instead of uh, itsyz dot azure edge dot net net we can uh, use our custom domain as well and we can use both HTTP and HTTPS so based on the pricing tier which we choose uh, there are some features which is uh, available in certain uh, CDN types uh, such as like uh, compression of the images and uh, routing based on the query string or uh, different type of routing mechanism based on the geo filtering as well so one thing to note in a CDN is what we call time to live and this is the setting which determine how long a content is to be cached in an edge server now we have seen uh, user 1 who is trying uh, to access a content and uh, during that time the content is cached in the edge server right when the user comes again after a period of time called X we need to decide whether we need to show him the uh, same exact content which is already cached or uh, we should go again to the origin server and fetch the content again that is determined by the settings called time to live and there are two different settings which we can configure one is called global caching rules and this global caching rules uh, sets uh, what is the uh, time to live for all the content uh, for this particular CDN endpoint whereas there is another custom caching rules available as well which we can configure and this will override whatever is already set for the global caching rules and we can choose a different condition uh, called uh, path or even the file extension and based on that only for certain paths and certain files we can change the TTL value differently so next is what we call CDN compression and this uh, capability helps in uh, reducing the file size uh, which is served to the user and hence it reduces the bandwidth cost and user will be able to load the pages very faster 
there are two type of compression which is possible one is uh, compression at the origin server itself and CDN should be able to interpret the content and serve it if the backend origin server doesn't have this capability then the compression can be enabled at CDN edge server as well we need to specify what are the file types or the mine types which we need uh, compression let's uh, switch back to a uh, demo to see how the CDN endpoint looks like so currently we are in Azure portal and we are in resource group called CDN and I have just created a storage account called CDN origin 01 and once we have created a storage account we enabled a capability called static website and if we enable this capability we will be able to use this storage account as a web server so under the static website blade so we have clicked on enable and this gives a primary endpoint to connect this web server so we just copy this endpoint and once we go to container there will be a container called dollar web which is the document root for the web server and if we click on this dollar web container we should be able to upload our content here and that should uh, be exposed to the internet now we have a sample picture which is uploaded and let's access the endpoint now we see that we are able to access uh, the picture which we have hosted in the storage account and now we are going to use this as the origin server so now uh, we have already created a CDN profile let's go to CDN profile which is created here if you look at the pricing tier it is standard Microsoft and the status is active and we can create multiple endpoints in a single CDN profile so uh, if you want to create one we can create here and currently I have created one already if we click on that particular host name or the endpoint so we see the different properties so for example uh, there is a host name uh, called CDN demo 01.azure edge.net so this is the name of the profile and we need to configure what is the backend origin here if we click on origin we see that origin type is custom because uh, we are not hosting any web app or cloud service so that's why the origin type is custom and we have chosen the origin host name as the endpoint we have enabled both HTTP and HTTPS so that means that uh, we should be able to access this content so now let's close this endpoint and pick the CDM host name 
so now we copied the endpoint host name and let's try that in the browser now we have pasted the CDN endpoint name and the image name now we see the same image has been loaded but the difference is that we are accessing the CDN endpoint now and that means that the content 